Hey guys, welcome to Kluge Tech Time. Today we got a fun one. We're talking all about the latest leaks and rumors for the Mavic 2. There's a ton of information coming out today. Every time I turn around, there's another leak, another rumor coming out. We're less than 24 hours away from their See the Bigger Picture event in New York City. So let's dive right into all the latest that we have as of this recording. So the first thing I'm going to show you is what looks to me to be the best pictures we've seen up close of the Mavic 2 and its sensors. As is widely expected, they're going to be releasing a pro version and a zoom version. As you can see here, on the left hand side we have the pro version and on the right hand side we have the zoom version. Now, what is different about the two? The main difference, of course, is in the camera hanging from that gimbal right there. As we can see, the gimbal looks very, very similar on both of these. It's just the camera that's hanging in between. So what is different? Of course, we can see that Hasselblad there. Everybody's excited about Hasselblad. Well, remember that about a year ago, DJI bought a significant stake in Hasselblad. So it is not surprising to see that they are finally cashing in on that name. So will there be a big difference in terms of the fact that they have Hasselblad there? I don't know that that is going to be the big difference. The big difference I think is really going to be the fact that there is a one inch sensor there. Now, I don't know specifically which sensor it's gonna be, but I think most people expect that it's going to be a Sony one inch CMOS there. We'll dive into the specs of that one inch sensor here in just a second. First, let's take a look at that zoom camera. So what is special about that zoom camera? Well, it is a two times optical zoom and a two-time digital lossless zoom. Before we dive into the actual specs of that zoom camera, as you can see, when I switch back and forth between these two, there really is no physical differences between the two aircraft other than the camera that is hanging from that gimbal. The good thing that we see about that gimbal is it looks much sturdier than the one from the Mavic Pro that was released two years ago. I think they've learned a lot from that and it looks like they've really beefed up that gimbal, so that is good. But it's still hanging out there with no protection at all, so it'll be interesting to see how it fares in a crash. This info was taken from a site that's really kind of advertising IFA, which is a big, it's kind of the equivalent, the European equivalent of CES here in the US, but it's held in Berlin in Germany every year. So this is a description from that site where they're talking about products that are going to be showcased there. Let's read what it says. Mavic 2 Pro is the world's first drone with an integrated Hasselblad camera for outstanding image quality with superior light and color performance. Housing a 1-inch CMOS sensor with a 10-bit color profile, the camera captures four times as many levels of color per channel compared to Mavic Pro to provide flexibility for photo and video, video editing. Now that's what's really important is that one inch sensor is really going to be about color and collecting light. That larger sensor really makes a difference in that area. And that's why everybody has been clamoring for a larger sensor for a long time. And that's why everybody back at CES in Las Vegas back in January of this year, when Autel started talking about a one inch sensor for their Evo, everybody was ecstatic and that's why everybody is loving this Mavic 2 Pro and its one inch sensor is the amount of light that it can capture per pixel is just much better and so that's going to result in much better quality images in terms of the dynamic range and that's really one of the big differences is that with that tiny little 1 over 2.3 inch sensor that's in the Mavic Pro, the Mavic Air, the Spark, the uh, and almost every other consumer level drone is a very similar size. That one inch sensor is more than twice as big, and so it's going to be able to capture much more data. Now, this becomes important when we're talking about dynamic lighting scenarios. Think of a sunset, right? A sunset, the, the foreground where you have the trees and the landscape is going to be probably be dark and you're gonna have the sun and the sky is gonna be really, really bright. On those little tiny sensors, you have just too much contrast there and they really can't handle it really well. You either have to expose for the ground or you have to expose for the sky. You're not gonna get great color in both of them. 
with a larger sensor, you should get better coloring. Now it'll be interesting to see how that really works out with this one inch sensor in the Mavic Pro. Now let's go to the zoom, the zoom. Powered by one over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor, Mavic 2 Zoom is DJI's first consumer drone with zoom, providing a dynamic perspective for a new era of aerial imaging and storytelling. With Mavic 2 Zoom, you can get closer to your subject at a moment's notice by combining two times optical zoom from 24 to 48 millimeters with two times digital zoom to create a 98 millimeter telephoto lens that captures lossless video in full HD resolution. Now that's really the big selling point for the zoom, right, is it's zooming, right? So they're not only doing optical zoom, they're also doing digital zoom. And so you get 2X optical zoom and you get 2X digital zoom for a total of 4X. Now, I was really hoping, and I think uh, there were a lot of rumors that there was going to be a larger sensor on this. Not the full one inch sensor, but I think a lot of people were maybe hoping it was gonna be a, a one over 1 1.7 inch sensor. There was a lot of rumors around that. Now. That would have helped in addition to the zoom features, having that little bit larger zoom would have helped with the dynamic contrast in terms of those light that we talked about with the pro version and its one inch sensor. So it will be interesting to see how this works out. Uh, will the zoom be just a killer feature? Uh, is that going to be what is going to sell you? Or is the one inch sensor with the pro gonna be what's gonna sell you. All right, so let's dive into actual specs. This is uh, this was released. Uh, uh, I got this from dronedj.com. They uh, uh, were the first ones to release inf this info. Uh, apparently, they, it came from a Chinese website. As you can see, there's a lot of Chinese in here. So let's uh, take a look and see what we can decipher. Now, I don't speak Chinese, uh, and uh, it's an image, so I didn't go and do any sort of Google Translate on it or anything like that. I'm gonna go through and see, see what I can see. All right, so in the CMOS, we can see that it's probably one inch CMOS. Uh, we can see the, the, the size of it. Uh, we can see the, the zoom has a one over 2.3 inch. We can see the size of the, the, the sensor there, what it can collect, as well as a comparison to the Mavic Pro. Now, the next line, we can see uh, that that's where they talk about the 10-bit color depth as well as a 28-millimeter lens. Now, that 28-millimeter that is kind of its zoom ability, right? When you have a telephoto lens, a, a higher number there, uh, you're going to see you're going to be zoomed in much further. As we can see in the Mavic 2 Zoom, it's a 24 to 48, so it starts a little bit uh, smaller and then can zoom into that two two times, which is the 48 millimeter. And then, of course, uh, when the the previous screen we looked at shows that we've got the 2x digital zoom in addition to that. Now the Mavic Pro it has a 28 millimeter. Uh, that's the first generation Mavic Pro. So the Mavic 2 Pro has the same sort of lens, a 28 millimeter there. Now, this is one of the places where the Mavic 2 Pro, I think is going to, to, to work out really well. If we go back and look at those images of the differences between the Mavic 2 Pro and the Zoom, you can see on the Zoom, it looks very similar to what the existing lenses on most of DJI's cameras like the, uh, the the existing pro and the air looks like it looks like there's probably a ring on there that a lot that will be able to be screwed off to be able to put nd filters on there if you look at the pro version you don't see that and so it's kind of one of those things that is it designed for nd filters and i think maybe it's not necessarily because you've got this mechanical aperture. A mechanical aperture is really kind of like your eye. And I've said this in other videos, but the, the aperture really is what controls how much light gets in. It's kind of an iris that allows it to kind of close off and open to allow more or less light in. And that's one of the reasons why on the Mavic Pro and the, the Mavic Air and the Spark, you really need ND filters is because they're, it's a fixed aperture. You can't control that at all. And so with the Mavic 2 Pro, it looks like there's going to be a mechanical aperture that it's going to allow you to adjust from a 2.8 to an 11. So it's going to uh, go from kind of wide open at 2.8, lets a lot of light in, to very small, closed off at f11. 
Uh, and so because of that, you may not need ND filters because it's going to be control how much light gets in with the aperture, just like your, your iris and your pupil. Uh, when it's bright outside, your iris closes off your pupil, and when it's dark, it opens it up. Now with the zoom, the aperture is basically fixed. It's not the same as the mechanical aperture on the Pro. It's a fixed one, but it adjusts with, with the zoom. So it's very similar to this. So if you guys can see the tiny little hole in this lens, this is just a cheapo kit lens right here that came with one of my cameras. Uh, you can see when I zoom in, you can see that that hole changes. So when I'm adjusting the uh, the zoom on this, you can see that the hole size actually changes in there. And that is going to be the same as it's going to be for the Mavic 2 zoom is that the aperture is actually going to change as you move in and out. So even though you see the f2.8 to the f3.8, that's the reason is because as it moves, the glass moves and it basically the, the effective uh, amount of light that it allows through is going to be different based on the zoom level. Now the ISO, that, that's kind of a measure of the sensitivity of the sensor inside of the aircraft. And you can see that it's actually different between the Pro and the Zoom, which is expected. And it's expected, and this is one of the reasons why that one inch sensor really plays in is that because there's more surface area, for that one inch sensor to be able to collect light, it's better in low light scenarios. So you're going to be able to go to a higher ISO and keep the grain away. Uh, if you, any of you guys have tried to take pictures or uh, video at dusk when it's you know not very bright outside at all, you'll see a lot of grain in the picture and this is uh, going to help that one inch sensor. So you can see there's two numbers there, the 100 to 6400 and the 100 to 12. 1800 that is a difference between video is the first line and uh, photo is the second line so you'll see on the mavic 2 pro that the effective uh, iso that you can go to is higher on a photo than it is on the video you'll see on the mavic 2 zoom it goes to 100 to 3200 uh, on both photo and video and the mavic pro was a uh, video used to be 100 to 3200 and video 100 to 1600. Now most of us are never going to go to those upper limits. It's going you're going to get way too much grain before that, but it just is kind of a demonstration of the ability of the sensor to be able to collect light. Now this is one of the places where I think a lot of us are probably our expectations aren't going to be met. I think a lot of people were just assuming that the, uh, the, the Mavic 2 was going to, to support 4K 60 frames per second, but that's not the case. It only supports 4K at 30 frames per second, which is the same as the Mavic Pro had almost two years ago. So a little bit surprising on that. Both the Zoom and the Pro are at 30p. Now what's different is the, the, the steps below that. So at 2.7K, you can go up to 60p on both the, the Pro and the Zoom. But on the, um, on the original one, you can only go to 30 frames per second, still at 2.7K. And then at full, full HD, which is 1080, uh, you can get 120p, and uh, that, that's for both the Pro and the Zoom. And that's higher than the Mavic Pro, which was only at 96. And it records at 100 megabits per second. That 100 megabits is important because that's the amount of data that it's storing. And the more data that it stores, the more you can kind of adjust that and, and in post-processing and get the most out of it. And this is really important for those of us that um, uh, wanna do color correction and that sort of stuff. The more data that's there, the more, uh, the more information that we have to be able to do color correction and make things even better. This next one is a bit interesting as well, is that the weight is actually higher than the original Mavic Pro. The original Mavic Pro was 734 grams, and the new one is just over 900 grams. Now, I haven't looked into this, but I had read something about European regulations, something about 900 grams. Like, if you're flying something that's heavier than that, you may need some licensing or something. I, I, I'm not familiar with that. I'm only reading what, or kind of regurgitating what I'd read on, you know, Facebook forums and stuff. Uh, if you know more about that, you know, just set, maybe set me a link down in the comment down below. Uh, I'd like to learn a, a bit more about that. 
but it is, uh, you know, all, about 170 grams heavier for the new Mavic 2s over the original Mavic, and which is a little bit on the surprising side, but you know what? Uh, it doesn't really matter in my opinion. Uh, you know, 150 grams carrying it around isn't going to be a big deal. Um, and if you get more battery life out of it and you get b better features out of it, not a big deal as long as it's not a regulation thing, right? If it's a regulation thing, that might be a bit of a problem. But here in the U.S. where I'm at, there's no regulations that, that would impact that, so not a big deal. Uh, the max speed is 72 kilometers per hour, which I think is about... 45 miles per hour, uh, but I'm sure that's just in sport mode. It'll be interesting to see what the max speed is when obstacle avoidance is uh, turned on, because as we know in DJI drones, uh, if you have obstacle avoidance turned on, then your speed is way lower than that max speed. And then also, what's the max speed if you have obstacle avoidance turned off, but you're not in sport mode? And so what is the max speed for obs uh, for um, you know, full gimbal, right? Because most of the time when you go into sport mode, sometimes you start getting props in the screen, you start, gimbal starts, uh, you know, being more in FPV mode, it doesn't, uh, you know, so, so there's things like that. So I'm interested to know, how fast can I go and be fully stabilized by the gimbal? No extra movements from, from the gimbal. The Mavic Air, sometimes when you're going really fast, it tips too much and the, the gimbal kind of drops down and so it just messes up some of your shots sometimes. So I'm interested to see what the actual fastest speed is that you can do full cinematic videoing uh, with full gimbal support. Flight time for the original Mavic Pro was estimated at 27 minutes. Uh, they're estimating 31 minutes. So the transmission system between the remote control and the aircraft is now using OcuSync 2.0. The original one, of course, used OcuSync. It had a distance of about seven kilometers, which was 4.3 miles-ish, and did a live transmission from the aircraft back to the remote at 720p. Now with OcuSync 2.0, it's using both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz will do a transmission rate of up to eight kilometers, which I think is about five miles, so slightly longer, and uh, does that transmission in 1080p when there's good enough signal. Let's go back and take a look at the pictures of the aircraft, and we can see that the propellers look like they are the quiet props that came with the platinum version of the original Mavic Pro. So it looks like these are gonna run with a very similar style anyway. So it'll be interesting to see, is it as quiet as the Mavic Pro Platinum? Is it quieter? Did they do an even better job? Anyway, so that's all I got. I'm super excited about this. I think the biggest question everybody has is, what is the price? What is the price? What is the price? What is the price? And for me, I don't know. <laughs> but, I hope that I can afford to buy the Pro version. That's the one that I want. Although that zoom looks awesome. 2X optical was pretty cool. Two, two additional X, so a total of 4X with lossless. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm interested to see what the pricing is. There's rumors that the zoom is actually going to be more expensive than the Pro. That seems kind of backwards. Wouldn't you think that the Pro would be the big Mamba Jamba? I don't know. But anyways, what do you guys think? What are you going to buy? Are you going to buy anything? Are you going to sit with what you already have? Is there a price point which you say, uh, no, I can't do it. I'm hoping the Pro is in my price point because I want that one inch sensor. If you guys are looking to buy a new Mavic 2 or any other DJI drone, if you guys look at the Mavic 2 and say, nope, that one's not for me, I want an Air or I want an existing Pro or something, I would love for you to hit my affiliate links down below. It helps support this channel, helps me to be able to afford to buy these, helps me afford to be able to buy equipment to be able to make these videos, supports this channel. See, the lights are going out. That was perfect timing. That light just went out. That means it's time for me to go out. I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Ciao. <laughs> That's funny.